everyone, welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Tatiana Pyle, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with Paula Patton. Patton made her film debut starring opposite Will Smith in the comedy film Hitch. Since then, she has starred in countless films, including Idlewild, Just Right, and Precious, in which she was co-nominated for a SAG Award with her performance. The star is currently set to take the lead in Chris Stokes' upcoming thriller, Sacrifice, which premieres on BT Plus on December 19th. Let's take a look. Secrets. Everyone has them. The lucky few take them to their grave. The rest would kill to keep them. That's what makes them valuable. Secrets are currency to me. There she is, the woman of the hour. Madam DA, we're too late. They had to have been tipped off. Daniela Hernandez. Just know you're on the wrong side of the system. It's funny you say that, seeing as how you spearheaded the most murderous police force in the country. Don't think we're finished with this dance, Hernandez. I love to dance. What kind of monster would do something like this? If you want, I can put some of my people on them for you. You got a problem, homie. It's bigger than him. I want you to do some hacking for me. Just found something for you. Do you have a name? Better. I don't believe this. Just be careful, Daniela. Don't get buried in your own city. You don't have enough dirt. I'll see you in court. I feel sorry for the poor soul who gets on your bad side. This one needs to pay for what he did. Everyone, please help me in welcoming Paula Patton. Hello. Hi. Can I just say that you look great? I know it's freezing outside, but you look so warm. I'm so jealous right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you. Especially in contrast to your character. Can I just say I watched it and I was scared of you, okay? But like in the best way. Like whenever you were giving directions, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I got it. I'll hack. I'll do whatever you need. So how was it for you adapting to this character and channeling that inner uh, baddie? Yeah, she's a boss. Um, you know, my, my father was an attorney, so I play this high-profile entertainment lawyer, and she has, she's got a great armor on, do you know? Um, she wears a lot of masks, and so it was really fun to play that, but it was also the challenge of when you take that mask off, when you take that armor off, and where's your vulnerability, do you know? Yeah. Um, do you maybe sometimes like got kind of confused like when you were done like you were using some of the jargon or some of the lingo from actually like working throughout the day practicing like this lawyer-esque type personality you're saying did i use it in my personal yeah. life <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know with my child i'm like let me negotiate with you okay no <laughs> you're never supposed to negotiate with your child right <laughs> but um no i think i usually i left it um at work yeah, so I want to say, like, there were so many moments in the film that honestly, like, reeled me in, um, primarily between you and Erica Ash's character. I just love the, like, love-hate relationship that you two have. Like, the one-liners were amazing, especially on your part when you were talking about, like, you don't have enough dirt. Like, I would have never thought about that. That was so <laughs> great. How did you guys kind of, like, create that dynamic? Well, you know, the dynamic was in the writing, and then there's just a chemistry that happens between two actors. Erica did an incredible job. I mean, you just, you love to hate her, and that made it so easy to play off of. Of course, in real life, we loved each other, but somehow it just worked. I mean, you never, there's like, sometimes there's just magic when you're, when you're working together, and you can't kind of, like, put a science on it, do you know? Right. And I just want to break down the powerhouse cast and crew because, like, watching it and just reading up on it, I'm like, so many of these people I grew up with loving and so many people now in entertainment, they're amazing. So it was executive produced by Chris Stokes, yes. produced and written and directed. And then it was also co-executive produced by Marcus Houston. Yeah. That's amazing. And he stars in it as well. Yes. And V. Bossman also was in it. Erica Ash, Altonio Jackson, Nelson Bonella, and Jordan Woods. Yeah. Yeah. So how was that working with her? It was great. She's such a sweet... I mean, she's so young. I just thought of her like a little sister. She's... She's a sweetheart. She did a great job, too. Yeah. Very and impressive. That was kind of the relationship that you two had in the film as well. It's true. I guess, I mean, that just had to naturally happen for us. But I don't know. I'm a mom, and so that mothering side comes out in me. Yeah. Did you <laughs> give her any um, directions or advice while on set? 
No, no direction. Just encouragement. Just letting her know that she was doing really well. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> it was so great. So I just want to talk about the fashion in the film as well, because your outfits were slaying, like the dresses, they were beautiful, the colors, the hair. How much input do you have when choosing the outfits that you have or how much outfits can you take home? Oh, well, those are both great <laughs> questions. First, I just have to say, really, our costume designer, Dolores Shabara, she just did a remarkable job. And so I, my, my hat is off to her. She came in with amazing options. And then, of course, we worked together, but she brought them in, you know? And, uh, and then it, it was just about the fun of also sort of my accessory, my, my, my uh, sidekick <laughs> in V. Bozeman is like, that's who I, you know, her outfits always fit my outfits, and we just tried to make it work. Anyway. Wow, that's so interesting. I didn't even realize that till you mentioned it. Your outfits really did complement each other in many of the scenes you two are in. I want to. I wonder, like, how was it actually like, having to wear a dress in nearly almost every scene, and then like heels as well, because it's so uncomfortable just wearing them on a daily basis. Uh, having to do girl, I do not dress. wear heels in my personal life. <laughs> I really don't. So it was, you, you, that's when you know you love the work you're doing because to put on those heels, sometimes that was hard. That was actually, it was always hard. Yeah. <laughs> my feet hurt. Yeah. I'm like, my feet hurt right now and I have on little boots. Yeah. So I can't imagine like stilettos. It's a lot. Yes, it was. But it was fun. It was part of the character. Honestly, it would be funny because they'd say, Paula, you can take your shoes off because we're, we're not seeing your feet. But I knew I had to actually have those shoes on to be Daniela. You so it was part of, you know, becoming the character. I'm like, Daniela would never take off her shoes. <laughs> no, She's like, she I'm wouldn't. wearing them all the time. It doesn't matter. So just getting into the film, like, yeah. what inspired you to take on the role? Like, how did you actually, like, prep to do, how actually, how long was the um, taping for the film? It was, a, it was a month and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, the inspiration, I mean, honest, I read the script. It was just so juicy. I couldn't put it down. Every page, I was like, she's doing what? What happens next? I just, and it was the opportunity to play someone like her. I had never played someone who was, you know, so fierce and a boss like that. So I was like, I was really eager to do it. And uh, Chris, our director, did an incredible job. Yeah, I, I do love You Got Served. So, I mean, you can yeah. expect nothing less yes. than excellence from him. So you've done the major motion films and you've done TV shows. What was different shooting for a film that's going to be on a streaming platform? You know, that's a good question. I'm... I don't think that anything's different. You know, you just have to go into it wanting to do your best. And then... You know, the process is a, lit fa it's a lot faster, actually. But your intention is always the same. You just want to make great art. You know, you hopefully you please the people. Well, again, it was incredible, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. I want to say you. the last, like, scene. I'm like, what? <laughs> the plot twist. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. Were you expecting that plot twist? Yeah, well, I read it. Yes. Yeah. So we definitely... We <laughs> 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 but, you know, we wanted to leave people wanting more. So that's what you're... We don't want to give it away, but it's a yeah. fun ending. Yes. I'm like, will there be a part two or maybe a TV series? It feels like it, doesn't it? I it think, we, you know what? We made it with that intention. We, first, we want to see how everybody likes it. But after that, certainly we want to give more and hopefully people want more. Yeah, and I know you have so much on your plate. Would you be willing to shoot a TV series if possible? Absolutely. This was a labor of love. I loved working with Chris. We just became great partners. And all oh, the whole cast, there was some kind of, there was just good juju on this. Do you know, it was such a pleasure. I would love, love, love to do, keep doing it. Yeah, I would yeah. love that. But in the meantime, you are working on an incredible film coming up. You just recently bought the rights to the film and TV to Josephine Baker's Last Dance, a novel by Sherry Jones. And you're going to set to star and produce the adaptation. Yes. That's incredible. I mean, yes. Thank you. <laughs> like, Josephine Baker, we all grew up reading about her story and how she changed and impacted um, black culture and American history. So how was that for you? Like, what kind of inspired you to um, take that film or take that book and well, no, I've 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 wanted to play her for a very long time. She's a remarkable woman, and then it was about how do I get the material. And so I was very lucky. My agents found me this book, and it hadn't been released yet. And so I got to meet with Sherry Jones. She did an amazing job writing this, and she's like, "I believe in you. Let's do this." So I um I bought it, and so now we're trying to make it. Yeah, I yeah. I haven't read the book, but how is it? It's incredible because you realize her life, Josephine's life, was so um, 
oh, it was so complex and rich. This woman, her contribution was not just the art, but she really gave her heart and soul. She, she um, fought for the French resistance in World War II. She housed Jews. She helped them get across borders. Then she came to the United States, and she fought for civil rights. She, when, she, when she really could have said, no, I, good enough for me, was she came to Miami and made sure that all the venues she performed in were integrated. It started there and then elsewhere. And she was the first artist of her kind to do that. And she was the first woman, the only woman to talk on the March on Washington. And um, then after that, this woman, she really wanted to prove to the world that race didn't matter, that, that, was, that, that we all can love each other. And she adopted 12 children, which she called the Rainbow Tribe. And the sad, unfortunate fact is that she, she adopted all these children from all over the world to prove this, and then she lost her fortune, and she was kicked out of her home. And she just still had this tenacity, this will to survive, and she performed until the day she died. She's a really remarkable woman. She truly is, and I think that that speaks to just like womanhood and femininity and, and being empowering, and it's yeah. so incredible. So for you, knowing that you're playing this phenomenal person in history, like how do you channel her power when you're in the future when you're going to play this role? Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm inspired by her, I feel her. You know, last night I was playing her music and I, I'll just say, I just, I felt her spirit come to me. Do you know, I feel like her story needs to be told and hasn't been told yet. And, uh, and she deserves recognition that she has not truly received. Yeah. What is that process like um, now that you've acquired the rights to actually like creating this project? Well, next we have to find someone to write the screenplay and get it financed. It's a process. I mean, this is a, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a journey, but I'm ready for it. I'm excited. Uh, do you think you'll have any input with the writing of it all? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, take that out, add that. Yes, I love it. Um, no, it's just incredible because, I mean, I, I love Josephine Big. I grew up listening to jazz music. And yes. it's just so wonderful that these stories are being told again. Like, they're needed. Yeah. I know, like, with Harriet Tubman and now Josephine Baker. Like, I'm just so excited to see what you create with the project. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So as far as the film is concerned, like, do you have any idea of, like, what you want to do? I'm just trying to well, pull something from you. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> well, because... She did so much in her life. I feel like it's too long to just be a film. I really, my, my sense is that it will be a limited series and that it'll be probably a 10 part. Um, and from then you'll have to just see. But we're going to get creative with it. Yeah. Do you have an idea of like the makeup or like the <laughs> hair? Because I'm like, this is. Oh, my. Well, you have to understand this woman, it was all about the hair and the makeup. And that's really what's really incredible about her. At the beginning of her life, it was very sensational. It was all about just the glamour and the entertainment business. And then it was how she actually changed her life and she gave her soul to humanity. And so to be able to see that. Um, Evolution is going to be a part of the movie. So you will see all that beautiful glamour. And then you're yeah. going to go and delve into the heart of the woman. Yeah, I was thinking just like, especially like for black women mm. with our hair, it's so important, especially in films and TV, that representation. We don't see like the various styles or the natural hair often. So I'm excited to see like what you do with that. Yes. Well, you, I, I won't be having any hair because <laughs> Josephine did not. She, it, for a while, she painted her hair on. And, and it became the, like, the most popular hairstyle in France. So all these French women wanted to have her hair, a black woman's hairstyle, which at that time was a remarkable thing. So she Absolutely. was just a trendsetter. And um, just her style is remarkable, just incredible. She would, yeah, yeah I could go on. Wait, so go does on. that mean that you <laughs> are going to cut your hair too? Oh, yeah. Would you do that? Of really? Course. That's so scary. I've already cut it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. You should do you. like an Instagram video of you cutting your hair. Okay. When it comes. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> Thank you. I need yes. help with Instagram. So I will, um, <laughs> I'll take all the pointers I can get. I will do that. <laughs> yes. Well, no, I'm, I'm, again, I'm like really excited, especially now the hair thing, like painting her hair. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So I can't wait to see like what type of designs did she have when she painted it? Well, there are a lot of like, you know, these sort of things on her, designs on her face, and it was just really slick and yeah. black to her head. You'd have to see the pictures, but yeah, yeah it's pretty. Oh man, I should have looked at they it They called before. it the Marcel. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds so chic. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, do you think you'll travel over to France to kind of take in the culture and the history of France as well? Yes, it would, you have to. Mm -hmm. You know, most of her life was in France. I mean, honestly, she was able to become the star she was because she lived in because she moved to France. She could not have accomplished those things in America at that time, unfortunately. And pick, taking it back to sacrifice, because you've done so much research with Josephine Baker, and I know that you say your father was an attorney. You kind of like took some of his lifestyle to adapt to this character. Like, how was it for you to do the research prior to actually um, acting as Daniela? Well, I mean, it's always a personal thing. I mean, it's there's many things that go into it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where to begin with that one. I know uh, quite a few entertainment attorneys, and I go to them and I ask them. But I really, you know what it is about wanting to know what it's like to be a woman in that position and what's your personal life like? Where and how does that how does your job affect the way you are in your more personal parts of your life? So that's always something that's important to me. Yes, and I think it's especially important that you mentioned being a woman mm. in like a male-dominated industry. There were parts in the film, and I won't give anything away, I promise, but where you just like commanded the attention. You broke up the fights, and you let them know like, this is happening because I said so. <laughs> like, do you experience any of those moments in your real life where you kind of have to like let them know, I'm the boss, I'm in charge, regardless of like what a man may say? Mm. You know, I think that it's important, it's fun when you're seeing it in a film. But in life, I think that you want to just carry that energy. And hopefully you don't have to be a dictator. You don't need to like demand things, but you can express yourself. And when people understand your intention, then you'll get what you want. Very true. Do you have any specific examples you'd like to share? Are you willing to share? <laughs> I, <gotta> yell, <laughs> I just want to know, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, especially like, for me personally, like I'm a younger woman and sometimes, you know, yes. I'm a little intimidated to like command attention or authority. Mm -hmm. So just maybe some yes. advice. Is, well, I think that that's it, that you actually have to know and own it for yourself. So then you don't, power is not about yelling things out or demanding anything from somebody. It's from an inner knowledge inside yourself. And that's something we all have to work on. Trust me, I, it's a work in progress for me as well. But it's about owning that and knowing that you don't need anything outside yourself. Everything you have is right inside of you. And so when you go with that power, people can't help but respect you. Wow, that was deep. Woo, I love that. Yes. <laughs> and, I mean, your life experience obviously has helped you with this with this character, enabling that like silent but deadly power. Mm. It's, it's so important to see. Again, representation is so important. Mm. Did you share with any maybe like your nieces or young girls in your life? Have you shown them this film? No, I haven't. Unfortunately, I have nephews. <laughs> I don't have, oh, not no. unfortunately, I love them. <laughs> they were really happy. They love the trailer. But um, but no, I haven't gotten to share it with any young women yet. I'm excited for people to watch it on Thursday, actually tomorrow. So yes, and hopefully, you know, it does inspire them. And it's going to be available on BET Plus. So yes. you guys download it now, please. So you'll have it ready. It's a really great, great streaming site. I mean, just to have. All of our films right there for you. Um, you know, oftentimes you go on other sites and you have to like go searching and you can't find everything. But I was just going through BET Plus and I was like, oh my gosh, all that we've accomplished as black people, there's so much to be proud of. And to have it all there at your fingertips is really special and a reason to download this. I absolutely agree. And we have some questions from the audience. Okay. Hi, Paula. Hi. Congratulations on Sacrifice and, Thank and, you. and Josephine Baker. I recently watched Jumping the Broom. And I'm wondering, um, are there any rom-coms in your, in your future? Are you looking to do any more rom-coms? I love doing rom-coms. I don't have one mm -hmm. lined up yet, but, um, but if it came to me, I'd, I'd do it in a heartbeat. They're just so fun. I love a heartfelt movie like that and hopefully it makes you laugh. It's fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And we have another one. Hi, Paula. Hi. Congratulations on Sacrifice. Thank you so um, much. I just had a question. Um, is there anything in particular that you've taken from the past works you've done that sort of helps you navigate through your next project? I'm, every movie that you do or every project helps you grow and you learn from it. Um, I don't know about one particular thing. I guess 
I guess it's more of a life thing, just learning to trust yourself more and to not, it's like what I was saying, it's how do you know, how do you know on your own that you are good without having to ask everybody else? That's the goal in life, right? And that's what I keep working on. And it's funny to be in the business that we're in because it relies so much on everybody telling you if they like it or not. But somehow you have to find something inside yourself that says, I like me. Amazing. You are incredible. Let You're me welcome. just say that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to talk with us. And we cannot wait to see Sacrifice on BET Plus this Thursday. Thank you so Thank much, Tatiana. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.